The Holy Tales. Well, today's story is about a man named Samson, who was very, very strong, and all his strength was a gift from God. Long, long ago, in Israel, lived a man named Manoah. He and his wife had no children. One day, an angel appeared to Manoah's wife. The angel said, "You will soon give birth to a child, but remember one thing: his hair should never be cut. Your child will be very special, as he will be chosen by God. One day, he shall rule Israel." During this time. The people had left God out of their lives. They thought they could take care of themselves and not need God's help. What they did not realize was that they would soon need Him to help them. The people of Israel began to get bullied by their enemies, the Philistines. The Israelites prayed to God, and God heard them, and He sent this chosen baby to Manoah's wife. Manoah's wife gave birth to a beautiful little boy, and she named him Samson. As Samson grew up, the Lord blessed him. He became one of the strongest men in the world. Once, when Samson was young, a lion attacked him. But Samson was filled with God's power, and he was able to defeat and kill the lion with his bare hands. The Philistines' cruelty over the Israelites grew more and more every day. This made Samson very angry, and he planned a revenge. Samson caught hold of three hundred foxes and tied their tails together, two by two. Then he placed flaming torches between them and released the foxes in the grain fields of the Philistines. Samson's action made the Philistines very, very angry, and now they wanted revenge for their losses. As per his plans, Samson let himself be caught, tied up, and taken away by the Philistines to be killed. He knew God was there to help him. Soon after his capture, the spirit of God came upon Samson. He became stronger than ever. He broke loose of the ropes which kept him tied, picked up a fresh jawbone of a dead donkey, and with it killed a thousand of the Philistines and escaped. Philistine soldiers went out searching for him, and once again Samson was captured. The soldiers put him in a city and locked the city gates. But God's strength and power was in Samson, and he walked out carrying the city gates on his shoulders. But soon, Samson failed God by disobeying Him. Samson told his wife Delilah all about the secret of his strength. Samson did not know that Delilah was a Philistine spy. After finding out his secret. Delilah called in a barber and shaved off Samson's hair while he was asleep. It was then that the Philistines attacked Samson in his bedroom. Samson tried his best to fight hard, but his strength was all gone. The Philistines blinded him. The enemies captured the blind and weak Samson and made him their slave. They laughed and made fun of him, who was once God's servant. Soon after all this, the Philistines held a feast to celebrate Samson's defeat. They called for him to perform for them and entertain them. A boy brought Samson and let him lean on the pillars which held up the palace, where the Philistines were having their feast. 
there were more than 3,000 Philistines in the room who all went on making fun of him. But Samson's hair had started to grow back while he was in prison. He prayed to God. O oh Lord, give me strength this one last time so that I can take revenge for my lost sight. With all the faith in God, straining and heaving, Samson forced the huge pillars apart. The entire place came crashing down in ruins, killing thousands of Philistines and Samson. Well, this story is so, so exciting. I wish I was as strong as Samson. You would be if you had lots and lots of spinach. Ew, I hate spinach. Then it's difficult to become as strong as Samson. You've got to eat healthy to be strong. I promise. From today I will. I will be strong too, just like Samson. Oh yes, of course, Freckles. The Holy Tales Today, I am going to tell you the story about how Jesus brought in fishermen and a few other men to follow him and make them his disciples. Who is a disciple, Holy? Um, a disciple is a person who believes in someone and follows his ideas and philosophies. Come on, now let us begin with the story. Okay. Long, long time ago, one day, Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee. And as he walked down, he passed boat after boat after boat. The sea was actually a big, beautiful lake where many fishermen would gather to catch fish. All day long, fishermen would work at the lake, emptying their nets and getting ready to go back in the water or gather their day's catch to sell in the market. As Jesus walked along the shores of the Sea of Galilee, he walked past many such boats and watched two men working on a particular boat. These men were Simon and his brother Andrew. Both Simon and Andrew were working very hard and were really frustrated about not catching any fish the night before. Andrew and Simon had met Jesus before, when John the Baptist had introduced them to him right after he was baptized. However, that meeting was for a very short while. Jesus walked up to Andrew and Simon and said, could you please put your boat out in the water for a little while? Andrew and Simon agreed. Jesus stepped onto the boat and started teaching from there. People who were walking by the shore and even the fishermen who were working in their boats stopped to listen to Jesus' teaching. After Jesus was done teaching, he turned to Simon and said, Go out deeper into the sea and put down your nets. Simon was hesitant. He said, Lord, we spent all night trying to catch fish, but we haven't even caught a single one. But only because you are asking, I will do so and put down the nets. As soon as Simon and Andrew let down their nets, they caught thousands and thousands of fish, almost breaking their nets. They waved to their friends, James and John, in the next boat, seeking help. They filled in the boat with the fish they caught, but the boat was full and was beginning to sink. Simon was shocked and amazed. He bowed down to Jesus and said, Lord, I am a sinner, and you should not be near me. Jesus calmly replied, Come, follow me, and I shall make you fishers of men. And 
Andrew, Simon, James and John left everything and went with Jesus immediately. They left behind their boats, their nets, the fish they caught and everything that they had with them. They did not doubt Jesus at all. They had all the faith and trust in him. This way, Jesus asked twelve men to follow him, and they became his disciples. All these men believed in Jesus and had immense faith in what he said. They helped Jesus to spread God's word to other people all around the world, and hence they were known as the fishers of men. However, not all these twelve disciples of Jesus were fishermen. They all came from different lines of work and different families. They were also not perfect. But they all believed in Jesus, and that's what made them follow him. So, did you like the story? Of course we did, Holy! It was a wonderful story. <laughs> I am glad. The Holy Tales Yes, and today I am going to tell you the story of Judas. Judas? The traitor? Hmm, I would like to know more about him. Come on, let's begin with the story. Judas Iscariot was the son of a man called Simon, and he lived in Curioth of Judah. In spite of being a disciple, he was the traitor, because of whom Jesus was put to the cross. He betrayed Jesus and broke his trust for 30 pieces of silver. However, the guilt of betrayal eventually led him to kill himself. Judas was one of the closest disciples of Jesus and he was given the responsibility of being the treasurer. Unlike the other disciples who were Galileans, Judas was a Judean as he came from Judea near Jericho. Judas was also one of the outspoken members who were quite prominent among all the twelve disciples. Judas loved his nation with all his heart and always wanted to do something big. So he joined Jesus' band to fulfill his own nationalistic dreams and wishes. Judas would often take undue advantage of being the treasurer and take money from the common fund for his own personal use. Jesus knew and understood all of this but he never judged him for that. Judas betraying Jesus for 30 pieces of silver is of great mystery to people even now. It is difficult for people to see someone so close to Jesus who was a witness to so many miracles and teachings of his master could ever betray him into the hands of his enemies. But it is not Judas' betrayal that put Jesus on the cross. It was our sins. Later, Matthias replaced Judas among the twelve disciples, and he went to places like the shores of the Caspian Sea and Cappadocia to spread the gospel. So that was the story of Judas the traitor. I see. So the lesson for today is we should not take undue advantage of the power given to us and also not be greedy like Judas. Well done, Freckles. So it is important that you all be good children. Yes, Holy, we will. Bye-bye. We'll be back soon. Bye, children. Keep watching. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun. 
to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep. <laughs>